can't drink from it. We got to take a photo after this. We got to take a photo after this. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Councilmember Dustin Hillish, Chair of the Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee. Thank you for joining us in our first committee meeting of the year this afternoon. I have been joined by my colleagues to my right, Councilmember Andrea Boone, Councilmember Lewis, and to my left, Councilmember Amos, followed by Councilmember Norwood, and Councilmember Waits, and we do constitute a quorum. I will first make a motion to adopt our agenda. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilmember Lewis. And I will mention Councilmember Lewis is our new member this year, so welcoming him to our committee. Please prepare the vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Six yeas, zero nays. The agenda <coughs> is adopted. I'll now make a motion to approve the minutes of the prior meeting. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilmember Lewis. Please prepare the vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Six yeas, zero nays. That motion is approved and those meetings are approved. Minutes are approved. Uh, we've now come to the point in time where we will elect our committee's vice chair for this year. Uh, last year, uh, Councilmember Amos did a wonderful job of being our vice chair and has expressed interest in continuing that role. Uh, so if there's no other uh, nominations or discussions on that, I will make a motion uh, to have Councilmember Amos as our vice chair. Is there a second? Second by Vice Chair Amos. Former Vice Chair Amos about to be, hopefully about to be. The vote is open. Vice Chair Amos. The vote is closed. Six yeas, zero nays. And look at that, we did that more efficiently than the U.S. House. <laughs> um, as far as our 2023 public safety and legal administration committee goals and objectives. If you have uh, committee members, if you have suggestions as to uh, what those should be, we're still going through last year's goals and objectives and getting responses from departments, uh, especially if they um, were asked for something that they didn't submit to us uh, and those uh, matters. But if you have suggestions for any goals and objectives for this year, please submit those to me. Um, by this time, hopefully next week, because I'll be working on that, um, a draft of those, and we can hopefully approve those at our uh, next meeting. And now we will move on to public comment. <clears throat> First, we have Juan Robinson. Robinson, just one second. Um, Ms. Waits, I have you signed in as a wanting to speak. Was it? You want to do that now or do you want to do that after public comment? Okay. May I? Let me go ahead. Okay. Councilmember Waits. Again, I want to be respectful Sorry, of your Mr. time. Robinson. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So there's an issue in the Thomasville, what is it, the uh, Mechanicsville, excuse me, I'm not feeling well, in the community where a number of new residents are moving in and there are noise complaints regarding the bars that are in that quarter. And, and my, my greatest concern is that these are individuals that have been there for a very long period of time. Uh, they've seen many challenges, ups and downs, including COVID. And I just simply want to ensure, because it's my understanding this issue will go before the License Review Board on tomorrow, that we're balanced and that the committee is aware of this dynamic to ensure that there's a balanced approach in terms of the bar, uh, the noise uh, that's generated in the community versus those new neighbors that have moved in. And it's my understanding they're fairly close to 
the two bars that are in question. Uh, but nonetheless, I have a relationship with each of, each of these individuals. It is my understanding that they have worked overwhelmingly to appease and to come to some compromise. However, there is one uh, that doesn't want any nor is doing daylight hours. And so I don't think that this is something that is reasonable. And so I wanted the committee to be aware of the fact that we want to make sure that we're supporting our small business owners, owners as well. Thank you. Let's wait. Back to you, Mr. Robinson. I'm at the noon on new public safety. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, welcome, Antonio Lewis. I'm Council Member Antonio Lewis. Um, I want to read off the um, the powers and duties of council members in the Georgia Constitution, Atlanta Constitution. Council members are empowered to make policy decisions and to approve ordinances and resolution and other local legislation to govern the health, welfare, and comfort and safety of the city's residents. Uh, last time I was here, um, we lost a 12-year-old um, and a 15-year-old. So I started coming down here talking to you guys about the issues most of you see on news and um, witness yourself. I want to ask you guys, what have you put in place for our city residents and our youth since November and December? Um, you guys are aware that, you know, many recreations are not open. Um, what resources, what funds have you guys put in public safety? What resources have you made available um, to our city residents? Because when you guys say public safety, it's the heartbeat of Atlanta. Business don't want to come here. Um, no events don't want to come here if public safety is high in crime. So what are we doing besides, you know, just sitting back, listening, and uh, hoping that um, some other alternative um, take place in the city? Because hey, we're going in the wrong direction. And you guys are the first line of defense on the public safety um, committee. And I would just like to know, and the public needs to know, what are you guys doing? I don't think it's really uh, any oversight when it comes to public safety. The police sit here. And you know, they speak to you guys and um, give you guys the data. But I don't think, um, and I don't know, I mean, I've been watching, I don't think anybody's holding you guys accountable um, as to um, providing the resources and um, speaking with finance or whomever um, and getting the money out here um, in the public and providing the proper resources. And I would just really um, just like to know. Um, what's going on because we can't keep doing the same business as usual and we getting the same results which is um, nothing as far as coming from public safety you know everybody come down here they speak to you guys and speak at you guys about what's going on but we need to get something from you guys of what you're doing I mean the public safety board is put here for a reason and we really need to know what you guys are doing and what you guys are um, planning on doing. Um, and I would just really just like um, to know that and just I hope we can have that information by the next um, public safety meeting because, I mean, we need a real plan as opposed to us just um, sitting here listening to the public. Thank you. Next is Minister Martine Jackson. Public Hope all is well with everyone. Um, Jackson, if you could just move the mic a little closer to I look closer to my mouth. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, my name is Minister Martin, and I'm also a life coach for family and uh, with troubled youth. I'm a founder and CEO of Life for Life. I wore my shirt today just to represent what we do. Uh, Life for Life is in, in its origin was given to me as a vision from God to become a movement in the whole United States, including the state of Georgia. I would, li I would like to introduce you to you today, Life for a Life slogan. You bout that life till you doing life. Life for a life. That's the reality of, of, this, uh, of the uh, gang participation and gun violence that is plaguing our city. Um, since 2018, my team and I have been doing community events and evangelism speaking to parents that have lost their children to gun violence and communities all over southwest georgia now we would like to present life for a life to metro atlanta and all surrounding counties 
We have, speak, uh, we have speakers such as yourself, teachers, ministers, and ex-game uh, ex members that are no longer about that life to come out and speak to the community about gun violence and its consequences. The, the community, mainly youth, has this false narrative that the city of Atlanta officials do not care about them. Uh, they also have the false narrative that they can't trust city officials. They either want them in jail or they want them dead. That's a false narrative that we must change in this city. Um, just as, um, let, me, let me keep going because I want you to totally understand why I'm here. Okay, okay, we, uh, we have these speakers. We have, like I said, we, we went to Southwest Georgia, mainly Albany, Georgia, to have these events, to have different people speak, you know, to the community to, to gain their confidence in city officials and leaders of that city. Um, and we had people uh, such as ex-game members, ministers. We had um, the school system. We had, we had almost, uh, the, the, we also had the mayor, Mayor Duro, down there in Albany, Georgia, to come out and speak to the community about gun violence and its consequences. And what we speak mainly on, our main objective is to think independently. Other than gun violence, using gun violence as conflict resolution, we would like to be able to team up with Fulton County public safety, school systems and counselors, mental health or uh, 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 mental health of Fulton County, sheriff's jail facilities, and grieving parents to create programs to, to educate our youth on peer pressure, gang participation, modern day influencers like um, uh, uh, social media, YouTube, if 95% uh, of the day our children have a system in front of us that influencing the way they think, influencing the way they act, influencing what they dress, for influence, influence, influence. It's time for us to influence our youth. It's time for us to get their confidence and trust back. We did um, have a get a seal. We did get a seal incorporated. This is the seal. Uh, and I'm Mr. Jackson, back you go ahead and conclude your comments. Your your time has expired. Okay. Uh, okay. Up, okay. Yes, sir. So let me let me ex let me just conclude, sir, ma'am. This this epidemic is not going away. Even if you build a thousand prisons a day due to the lack of correctional officers in the state of Georgia, the gangs that are incarcerated are killing each other as well. Just as influencers such as social media, and like I said earlier, and YouTube have our youth attention 95% of the time, we must put life for life in the media and on a broader stage to influence and keep positive influence in our youth's faces at all times. Life for life is that 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 leadership life for a life is that platform that we can have mothers that have lost their children to gun violence to stand up and, and tell their story we are all all must we all must get involved and use our gifts talents and professional skills to regain the mindsets of our children if you don't if y'all don't if, if the city officials don't back us who is going to back us who is going to back us? Yes, they said setting little fires all over the city with different organizations, but it's time to cause an inferno in this city and take the mindsets of our youth back. If you don't want to get involved, it, at least uh, uh, um, promote us uh, or um, give, help us to get the necessary. Um, you're over. Okay, I'm sorry. Fees and what uh, fees waves to us to get our 501c3. We really want to get scrap up our boots and and hit the streets doing what we necessary to uh, get our children off the street from, and put them guns down. Mr. David Holder. Hello, council staff. Um, I'm David Holder. I chair the Neighborhood Association for Mechanicsville. Um, 
probably over the past uh, six months, uh, we had a new group of uh, townhome people that moved in. I think roughly about two or three people were kind of spearheading um, this new group they have called Progressive Mechanicsville. And what they're wanting to do is they're wanting to shut our businesses down in the community. The community is totally against it. I mean, they're running to the media, they're running to everywhere, they run to the mayor, then the town hall, they're doing everything. These businesses have been in this community for years. Um, they, we have a business called Believe that does rum punch um, on Sundays. Uh, it's an African-American event where Caribbean people come, African-Americans come on Sundays, and they have, um, they, they have different music, house music, Caribbean music, you know, American music, and so forth. They don't like it. They don't want any noise during the daytime. They don't want any noise at night. Um, I walk with a couple officers. Um, they, they went through and did a decimal reading. The, the officers, as of lately, could not write tickets for these businesses in the community uh, because they're well within the legal guidelines. Um, you have one person over there said he has PTSD. Maybe that's the wrong neighborhood to be in. Um, we're, 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 you know, Mechanicsville is the city center. I mean, we're downtown. Um, I've talked to many residents in this community, and they're totally against displacing our businesses. If we displace this business based off of these acquisitions from two or three people, we're going to have a lot of parents out there that don't, uh, won't be able to provide support for their kids. So we're going to have a totally different issue in the, in the community. I mean, you may have kids robbing people to get what they need because their parents. Um, this event that's coming on LRB tomorrow employs at least about 25 to 30 individuals in the neighborhood. And I can't tell you what Tom, Dick, and Hank and 656, they employed numerous people too. If we allow these two or three people to come in, shut these businesses down, it's going to set precedence for the rest of the businesses, and we're going to have a, a huge issue over in the community. Um, I've sat down with these two or three individuals, worked with the, the business owners over there. They decided that they didn't want to take their numbers to work with them. They're trying to circumvent this process. I think tonight they're coming to the NPUV meeting uh, to create some havoc about these businesses, too. So I wanted to make this... Um, this committee aware of what's going on, because I'm sure the emails are starting to circulate. There's going to be a press release. I, I think tomorrow I've, I've seen the letters. I've got flyers where they're distributing around the community, trying to get people to come to the meeting. Um, some of these folks don't even know what the meeting's about. You know, um, they, they came to our last meeting uh, with, with some flyers. They had an understanding that, that the law states that they couldn't have music, and when they got to the, they could not have any noise in the neighborhood. When they came to the meeting, we had to explain to them that um, noise can be in the neighborhood, I mean, as long as they're within the decimal reading. So I just want to give you all a heads up on what's going on. And the Mechanicsville community is very supportive in keeping the businesses in the community. Again, these are only two or three individuals who's creating chaos in the community and, and, and causing some um, issues around. Thank you. And also, if they're going to target, they need to start with Georgia State over there, because Georgia State's got fireworks over there. They've got the game plan. They need to start with Georgia State. They can't do Georgia State because they know they can't take on the state, so they're starting in the neighborhood. Mr. Holder. Councilmember Lewis, we generally reserve this time to hear from the public, but if you want to wait until the end of public comment or if you need to, so you need to make a comment right now, you may. But. Okay. Toya Knox. Um, so I I own a property that's in Adair Park. Um, it's not so if you pull the uh, mic down a little bit. I own a property there. that's Thank in Adair Park, and on September fourth, um, a letter was written to um, to me, um, and then it was just saying that I needed to come to a um, formal meeting. Um, with the community in regards to some code enforcement issues. Um, on the 18th, code enforcement went and cleared out my yard. The meeting was on the 22nd, so I go to the meeting on the 22nd, and on, in that meeting, they're giving me 30 days to make corrections to the, to the property. But the corrections had already been done by code enforcement prior to the, the meeting. Um, so I've been speaking with um, Officer Lyles and Ms. Daphne. Um, at one point, they weren't even trying to hear that I was never given an opportunity to make the corrections because the corrections had been done. They weren't trying to, just a logical approach to it. They weren't interested in that. 
until um, <clears throat> I had them actually open up a, a letter because I actually never received any of these letters. The letters were, were marked with the old address, which they have the new address in the system. For some reason, they continue to send it to my old address. So as, they're, as we're opening up the, the mail, we're seeing that this information um, is just telling me, hey, you need to meet, meet for a meeting regarding your property. <clears throat> if that's the case, then we should get, we, as citizens of, of Atlanta, who are at one paying the highest taxes in the, in the state, um, I neglected to mention that they also put a lien on my property in September. So all of this is done prior to me even being able to give it, get an opportunity to do anything. It's, and, and the sad thing about it is I go down to code enforcement and you see other people dealing with this. This is people who own their property without any loans. They're coming after their properties. And this is not okay. We're spending a lot of money for taxes here. Like we spend a lot, I spent $5,000 just last year for taxes. So if I'm unable to get my home up and renovated, it's because I have a whole responsibility, and not to mention we all, you know, we had COVID, you know, and all of these things that have happened. I think out of fairness, we need to think about what, what we're doing to our community and stop trying to tear us down because we're already at a loss. And I also want to commend them for thinking about our youth. I have a 21-year-old and a 19-year-old, and it is hard out here for adults, so it's extremely hard out here for younger kids. I hope that you guys actually listen to what is being said. Next is Henri Jordan. I am now to the Spirit of God to everyone that's here. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Luke 19, chapter 8, verse. Zacchaeus' confession reveals a penitent heart. Jesus give us power to disobey Satan and power to obey you. To obey Jesus is life, to disobey him is death. James Griff. Jesus says, place the income he created through me in my hands to help his people. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his, Job 12, chapter 16, verse. Job believed in God's omnipotence, too, though have he emphasized its destructive capacity. I saw a vision about continents plotting against America. Then God had me search for properties. A China property was across the street from the property I was observing making me ask Jesus about protection. Then Christ showed me a tall white angel who will protect my property if I seek his will. And he beheld them and said, what is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected the same is become the head of the corner. Luke 20 chapter 17 verse. Men even among God's chosen people may reject him, but God's plan will succeed whether with or in spite of them. James Griff rejected Jesus' word and assignment. Christ instructed me to move to a bigger house for his assignment because my life is in danger at my house. The just Lord in the midst thereof, he will not do iniquity. Every morning does he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. Zephaniah 30, chapter 50, fifth verse. God's judgment that the life-giving ladder, spring, or rain had been withholding. Jesus chastised me for asking to give James Griff a chance when Christ said James is against his righteous word. James was in a church that believed in Jesus' righteous word. James was in my crawl space, coming to my tub I heard the noise and I believe it was him because he's after the income Christ created in me but it's for holy purpose the men to be Christ like men women to be Christ like women children to be Christ like children Mike not making whores out of women a men are not to be faithful to their wives 
of children be faithful to their mother and father. Obey Jesus Christ like men and women. Okay, that concludes public comment. Councilmember Lewis, did you have any more comments? I wanted to speak uh, to to the uh, to what Dave Holder spoke to a little earlier. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Holder, for coming down here. I'm, I apologize that you had to uh, take this time to come address us about something you've been calling all the council members, trying to express the feelings of the neighborhood. A neighborhood has been there for a long time. And when you think about the two, uh, some of the properties you're talking about, these are properties I frequent uh, three, four times a, a week. Uh, when you think about Tom, Dick, and Hank, my wife and I, I had our first date there and I proposed to her there. So we're just thinking about like actually restaurants that we need. Uh, talk about living in a food desert. Uh, President Shipman reached out to me a few weeks ago and said, hey, where do we meet in District 12? I said, we don't have no restaurants. Uh, let's go to Tom, Dick, and Hank. I remember having conversations like that because we have to cross that street. So thank you for coming down. Uh, we heard you loud and clear. Uh, we do understand that gentrification is happening in our community now. And uh, they're trying to close down the black owned restaurants, but not walking less than a block down the road to Georgia State, having conversations about the fights and the shootouts and the, and the noise that's coming out of that campus. So I appreciate you again for standing up and being strong, brother. All right. <clears throat> well, I'll move to our consent agenda. Taking claims with favorable and unfavorable recommendations. I'll make a motion to accept all favorable claims. I'm those one through 12. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Vice Chair Amos. Also, before we move to the vote, recognize we've been joined by Councilmember Bond. <clears throat> Please occur the vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. Those items are approved. I make a motion to adverse all unfavorable claims, items 13 through 42. Is there a second? Second, Boone. Second by Councilmember Boone. Please prepare the vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. Those items are adverse. Moving on to regular agenda and ordinances for second read, 2201908. An ordinance by Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee, as amended by Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee, to amend the City of Atlanta Code of Ordinances, Part 2, Chapter 106, Article 5, Offenses by and Against Minors, Section 106. Dash 227 to modify the unlawful hours of accompanied minors 16 years of age or younger from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. on any day to the hours of 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. and modify Friday and Saturday unlawful hours of accompanied minors 16 years of age or younger from 12 a.m. midnight to 6 a.m. to the hours of 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. maintaining the current exceptions listed in section 106-227 and for other purposes. Councilmember Waits, do you have a uh, desire on this legislation? Uh, yes, sir. I just wanted to comment. Thank you so much. I have been in conversations with the law department, and it is my understanding uh, that for various reasons, there's reasons there is a desire to hold the legislation to which I support. But I wanted to go on record and indicate that Zion Charles's mother was here today to speak to her support of this legislation, which I think is important to value her time. I also want to speak to what I believe is a need for urgency and to prioritize this legislation, specifically given that we did lose another nine-year-old youth uh, in the District 12 community. So it is my hope once we work through the various challenges, uh, it's my understanding that APD is also weighing in, uh, that we will be able to have meaningful discussion uh, surrounding this piece of legislation. So thank you again, Mr. Chair. Uh, do you have a motion, Ms. Waits? Yes, sir. The motion is to hold. Okay. Council Member Waits made a motion to hold, which I will second. Please prepare the vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. 70 yeas, 0 nays. That item is held. Item number 2, 230 
ten twelve. I believe we have a substitute. Is that yes. correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. And it changes the caption. Okay, I'll make a motion to bring that substitute forward. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Amos. Please prepare the vote. The vote is open. Please vote. The vote is closed. 70 0 nays. That substitute is now before us. An ordinance to amend the City of Atlanta Code of Ordinances, Chapter 122, Article 2, Section 12236, currently entitled Dealers and Secondhand Vehicles, to establish regulations applicable to used motor vehicle parts dealers, which shall include regulations requiring the maintenance of certain documentation for a period not to exceed three years, the provision of a daily report to the Atlanta Police Department to establish penalties for a failure to comply therewith and for the purposes. All right, Councilmember Lewis, this is your primary legislation uh, amongst other co-sponsors. Do you have a comments or would like to make a motion? First, uh, quick, quick comments. Uh, when we think about uh, the uptick of the theft in the city of Atlanta, we think about Cadillac converters just being snatched off at the rate they're being snatched off. Uh, we don't want to uh, inhibit and stop the uh, sale of uh, used auto parts from the people that are supposed to be selling them to these uh, scrap yards, used car dealerships, uh, regular car dealerships, uh, people that have been junking their own car because they're willing to give us their make and model a vehicle. We want to stop the young folks and stop the people that are out here actually chopping our Cadillac converters off and selling them and making money at these scrap yards. So this piece of legislation, I think, will put a dent in that. I think that we're going to uh, stop people from going to do it. So. I move that we approve this. Right, there's a motion for approval by Councilmember Lewis. Is there a second? Second by Councilmember Waits. And Councilmember Waits would like to speak. I uh, just wanted to welcome Councilmember Lewis to the committee. I share your passion on this issue, and so it's a pleasure to have you on the committee. All right, please prepare the vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. 78 0 nays. That item is favorable. Moving on to resolutions. Item number 320R3068. A resolution by Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee authorizing the reemployment of City of Atlanta Department of Police employee Angela Moore, police officer, under Section 3-505A of the Chart of the City of Atlanta and for other purposes. Chief, Deputy Chief Peak. Um, not in the explanation. Where will this, uh, I don't have the full paper in front of me, but where will this uh, employee be uh, either continue to be employed in or, or move to under this uh, recapture? Yes, well, first and foremost, uh, Happy New Year to the happy Public Safety Committee. I'm certainly glad to be here mm -hmm. and look forward to a great and prosperous uh, year fighting crime for 2023. Um, Officer Angela Moore, she will be recaptured and brought back to our personnel unit. Uh, we have an enormous amount of backlog as far as our hiring people that are uh, applying for the job. And so the process for us to process those people to ensure that we get through those applications in a timely manner and onboard them to the city of Atlanta is critical. So she'll be helpful for us uh, achieving those goals. Yeah, I do, I do see that now in the staff comments, uh, background, background and recruitment. So yes, sir. Not only we need to bring her back, we need to clone her. So absolutely. And she's a great person to bring back. So I'll make a motion to approve this resolution. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Amos. Please prepare the vote. Thank you. The vote is open. Please vote. The vote is closed. 78 0 nays. That item is favorable. <coughs> Second here. I'm trying to see. So 4 through 12, I believe, are all settlements. Yes, Mr. Chair. We can take those as a block, unless there's any opposition. 23 are. We'll I'm sorry. 23R3068 
3069, a resolution by Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee authorizing the settlement of all claims against City of Atlanta in the case of Cynthia Shackelford versus City of Atlanta Civil Action File Number 20 EV004177, pending in the State Court of Fulton County in the amount of $115,000.00, authorizing the settlement amount to be charged to and paid from the account numbers listed herein, authorizing the Chief Financial Officer to distribute the settlement amount and for the purposes. 23R3070, a resolution by Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee authorizing the settlement of all claims against Defendant City of Atlanta in the case of Glenna Tyler versus City of Atlanta Civil Action File Number 21EV001848, pending in the State Court of Fulton County, Georgia, in amount of $36,793.16. Authorizing the settlement amount to be charged to and paid from the account numbers listed herein. Authorizing the Chief Financial Officer to distribute the settlement amount and for the purposes. 23R3071, a resolution by Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee authorizing the settlement of all claims against defendant City of Atlanta in the case of State Farm Mutual Automobile Insurance as Sobergi of Misty Dort versus City of Atlanta and Grisha Patel, civil action file number 20 EV007712, pending in the State Court of Fulton County, Georgia, in the amount of 21,000 zero cents, authorizing the settlement amount to be charged to and paid from the account numbers listed herein, authorizing the Chief Financial Officer to distribute the settlement amount and for other purposes. A resolution 23R3072, a resolution by a Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee authorizing the settlement of all claims against defendant City of Atlanta in the case of Billy David Jones versus City of Atlanta, civil action file number 2021. CV351960, pending in the Superior Court of Fulton County, Georgia, in the amount of $155,000.00, authorizing the settlement amount to be charged to and paid from the account numbers listed herein, the settlement amount, and for other purposes. 23R3073, a resolution by Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee authorizing the settlement of all claims against City of Atlanta in the matter of free play music, LLC's claim, of use of copyrights at Hartsville Jackson Atlanta International Airport in the amount of $20,000 to be paid from the accounts listed, authorizing the Chief Financial Officer to distribute the total settlement amount and for other purposes. 23R3074, a resolution by Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee authorizing the settlement of all claims against Defendant City of Atlanta in the case of Steve Carton versus City of Atlanta, civil action file number 22EV001487, pending in the State Court of Fulton County, Georgia, in the amount of $6,000.00 authorizing the settlement amount to be charged to and paid from the account numbers listed herein, authorizing the Chief Financial Officer to distribute the settlement amount and for other purposes. 23R3075, a resolution by Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee authorizing the settlement of all claims against defendants in the cases of Genteris Hinton Montgomery versus City of Atlanta, civil action file number 121CV, 5028, United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia, and Gentarius Hinton Montgomery versus Tamanetta Dabney, civil action file number 2022 CV 369835, Fulton County Superior Court in the amount of $20,000, authorizing said amount to be paid from the account numbers listed herein, authorizing the Chief Financial Officer to distribute the total settlement amount and for other purposes. 23R3076, a resolution by Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee authorizing the settlement of all claims against the City of Atlanta in the case of Ebony Cross versus City of Atlanta, civil action file number 21EV000021, Fulton County State Court in the amount of $250,000.00, authorizing said amount to be paid from the account numbers listed herein, authorizing the Chief Financial Officer to distribute the settlement amount and for other purposes. 23R3076, a resolution by Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee authorizing the settlement of all claims against the City of Atlanta in the case of Julian Owong and Christian Thomas versus City of Atlanta, 
City of Atlanta, Georgia, civil action file number 2021 CV 348098, Fulton County Superior Court, in the amount of $70,000.00, authorizing said amount to be paid from the account numbers listed herein, authorizing the Chief Financial Officer to distribute the total settlement amount and for other purposes. Those, before I make a motion, sorry to put you on the spot, Ms. Robinson, but not asking about the specifics of any of these cases. Uh, so we can discuss this in our open session, but you know there are a number of uh, vehicle crashes on here, and I know each department may have, may or may not have policies. But is there any citywide policy as to when an individual is found to be responsible for an automobile crash that's employed by the city, obviously driving a city on city time, driving city vehicle? Is there any policy? That the city has in place as to I don't say repercussions, but you know, are they uh, restricted from driving a city vehicle for X number of days? Is or are they put in a defensive driving course? Do we have any citywide policy right now that uh, covers this? Okay, good afternoon, Amber A. Robinson, um, City of Atlanta Department of Law. The repercussions for being found at fault for um, a vehicle accident are department specific and are, are not citywide based. So the, the, the policies for, let's say, the Atlanta Police Department will differ from those of the Department of Transportation. And I request a report on each department's policy in regards to these type incidents. Yes, we'll be happy to coordinate with the departments to get that to you. Thank you very much. And on that, I'll make a motion to approve uh, these multiple items. Is there a second? Second, second by Councilmember Boone. Please prepare the vote. Mr. Chair, the seconder again, please. Councilmember Rubio. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. Those nine items are approved. I don't believe we have anything coming off of held this cycle, uh, but I would, uh, as members, Probably no. We have we passed legislation a year or two ago that um, certain or if a item is held for a certain length of time, it rolls off. So I just wanted to bring the attention to at least the first two items on our held agenda. One is uh, Councilmember Bakhtiari's legislation. I'm sure she is anxiously listening to our committee uh, meeting from wherever she is at. Uh, we'll touch base with her to make sure she's aware. And then the second item that comes up in February is uh, Vice Chair Amos, one of your pieces of legislation. So do you want to continue to hold that and let it roll off? Or do you have, or are you looking for an amendment or substitute? Or what is your intention with this uh, item number 14? Uh, Mr. Chair, definitely want to keep exploring. I guess the question is if we hold it to the next public safety meeting, would it roll off? Before then, I don't think so, but just want to. I think it clear. is it from the time it's introduced or from the time it comes up at committee? I mean, it's definitely, it was held on February 15th, so. The, the committee meeting after full council starts the time. So the. the so it'd be February 20th. Okay. It will come off. Okay. So you still have enough over a month, so okay. at least Thank you. another committee meeting or two. Yes. All right. Uh, any comments, questions, well wishes? Do you want to hit your speaker button? Looks like we have multiple. I'll start with uh, Council Member Waits. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I have an interest in 220-1367. This is the one that will require uh, cameras at gas stations, and I'd like for... Uh, the law department to give an explanation as to why this one has not been heard or moved. Ms. Robinson. Yes, um, 
Amber A. Robinson, City of Atlanta Department of Law. The Department of Law has reviewed this particular piece of legislation, and as is indicated in legislation that has recently passed, um, this council, the, the state um, currently preempts this action from being taken by municipalities, and so therefore recently you all sent legislation to the General Assembly to urge them to change their laws to permit this um, cities to take the action as proposed in this legislation. And so subsequent to, your, to this legislation being introduced, um, the legislation was sent to the General Assembly urging that action. Mr. Need to be on mic, please. So I, I guess we are doing what's necessary to possibly move this at a later date. We're waiting for approval. Should, should the General Assembly act, okay. that would be appropriate. Thank you, ma'am. Right, Council Member Bond. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just have a concern that, and would like to make a request that a I guess a maintenance status or maintenance report uh, be brought to the committee on the fire station on Howe Mill Boulevard, Howe Mill Drive. I was questioned by the media on Friday about it. That apparently, there is a new station that will be built for that area, but there seems to be an ongoing, I guess, sewer-related issue where either the actual sewage or the uh, vapors or smell of sewage is coming up in the station. And the administration, the mayor took a tour of it, I think, back in the spring. And so I know he mentioned that something should, should have been done about it, but apparently no repair has taken place. So if the appropriate agency, whether that's DEEM or uh, the fire, uh, fire Rescue, can come back to us and give us an update on whether or not they're going to be able to repair that or not, or, you know, what's the time? Thank you, Mr. Bond. I know we do have someone from AFRD here, but uh, as you indicated, that technically falls under Dean. But do you have any updates on Station 26 and its current status to that issue? If you could just come up to the mic and introduce yourself. <clears throat> Happy New Year, everybody. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. I'm Dietrich Cummings, Atlanta Fire Rescue. At this moment, I do not have an update for that station, but I could definitely get it and uh, follow up with whomever um, would like that information. Thank you very much. And that's right, station number you. 26. Yes. 26. Yeah. Up in the curve. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it, Mr. Bond? Yes. All right, Councilmember Amos. Chief Pete, can you come up to the podium, please, sir? How are you doing today? <laughs> Since you are the point person, I need you to take a message back, especially to our officer in back. I do believe today is National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. So if you're take that back to the chief and to the rank and file and, and just spread the word that I definitely can speak to my colleagues on behalf of the Public Safety Committee of Atlanta City Council, we wish you a happy law enforcement, national law enforcement appreciation day. Thank you for what you do, sir. So received and thank you all for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Peake. Council Member Boone. Yes, I would like to offer condolences to the family of the late civil rights legend Reverend James Orange, his wife, Miss Cleo Orange, passed on last week. So on behalf of the city of Atlanta, we would offer our condolences to Deidre, Tamara, Cleon, and Jaclea. This family has meant so much to the United States of America and abroad. The family of Reverend James Orange. Thank you. Any other questions or comments before we adjourn? All right. Thank you all for making this first public safety meeting of the year run smoothly. Uh-oh, Councilmember Bond is about to, about to change that. Councilmember Bond. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I know we're all in support of the uh, Georgia Bulldogs, but they're playing a Christian university that has had the kind of season that lends itself to a biblical nature. So I would just implore as we root for the dogs to double down on prayers 
heading into the game. I know me, and, uh, me and the vice chair and certainly have our uh, right. red and black I've on. I believe Councilmember Norwood, Councilmember Bond. They are so, playing uh, the Christian school, so don't take that for granted. You know. Go, uh, go dogs. Go dogs. Uh, thank you all, and on unanimous consent of members present, we are adjourned.